We trust God to manifest himself today. Hallelujah. And to do that which only he can do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Last month, the Spirit of God put in our heart to continue sh to share along a certain line. We're going to continue to share along that line today. And the thought we're considering is foundations of deliverance. Foundations of deliverance. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, deliverance means many things to many people depending on people's religious background. Hallelujah. When I t talk about deliverance, I'm simply talking about a situation where Satan has gotten involved. Hallelujah. And people are not able to reach their maximum potential because of Satan's involvement. Hallelujah. So when I talk about deliverance, I'm not talking about somebody shouting or screaming necessarily. I'm simply talking about God getting involved in a situation where Satan had been involved in and hindered, hindered people from reaching their maximum potential. Hallelujah. So here was a place that somebody was supposed to have been, but they are not there simply because there's an involvement of the devil. Now, the involvement of the devil does not mean that you're possessed or oppressed. It simply means that Satan is involved in the situation. Amen. I said amen. So, when we talk about foundations of deliverance, we're talking about things that God has put in place to see to it that you can reach your maximum potential. Amen. Amen. There are some things that are in place. That's why some things are going the way they're going. But God also has things that he has put in place so that things can go right. Are you here, somebody? Now listen to me. There is no, there is no wrong that cannot be righted. There is no situation that cannot be corrected. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you can handle challenges. People call them problem. You know, I really don't like the word problem because the way you name something is the way it will be. So when you say problem, problem, there's a way it sounds. So I prefer using the word challenge. Hallelujah. But however it is, there's no situation in your life that may have hindered you in any way that God does not have an answer to. Praise the Lord. And usually there are, there are at least two ways that people deal with, with situations. You can deal with it from the natural standpoint, purely the natural standpoint, using human wisdom and human knowledge, and it can get you so far. But you can also deal with situations in life from the spiritual standpoint. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about foundations of deliverance, we're going to examine that this world as we see it and as we know it does not just function anyhow. Hallelujah. We like saying it here that life is spiritual. What do we mean by life is spiritual? Meaning that life has a spiritual root that if you ignore it will be to your detriment. Nothing just happens. Are you here, somebody? Praise the name of the Lord. I said nothing just happens. I said nothing just happens. Let me try and give an example. If you get into an, a, 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 an automobile, a car, and start driving it, do you know that you don't necessarily have to know how the car functions in order to drive it? You just need to know how to drive it. You don't need necessarily need to know how the car functions. There are so many things that make a car function. There are electrical parts, there are mechanical parts. I don't want to get into all of that. But there are so many things working together that make a car function, an automobile function. Now, you don't have to know everything about how the car functions to make it get it to function, but you, know, you need to know how to drive it. If you, want to, if you have a, own a car and you want to enjoy it, you want to drive it, at least you have to know how to drive it. Now, you don't need to know how a car functions for you to drive it, but you do need to know how to drive it. Hallelujah. So when, I'm talking about found, when we're talking about foundations of deliverance, we're trying to say, listen, there are things in place many times that are the result or the reason why certain things are the way they are. Hallelujah. Now, when you understand them and you understand how to alter them, then they don't have to remain the way they are. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God forevermore. Now, let me just say it another way. Sickness can be healed. <laughs> Lack can turn to abundance. Disfavor can turn to favor. Are you here, somebody? 
Now, one of the things I love about the gospel is that there's no guesswork about it. You know, I have a background in science engineering. I know my dear brother here is an architect. He also has a background in some form of science. But I have a background in engineering. You don't, you don't guess in science. You don't guess in engineering. You use established laws. When we have equations in, when, we, when we're solving mathematical problems in engineering, we have what we call assumptions. Assumptions means that you may, you, may just see a, you may just see a little figure like this, but it means so much. But that little figure didn't just appear. Many generations of scientists have done experiments to prove it and to prove it and to prove it. So when you use it, when you use it in a calculation, you know you're using something that is proven. So when I'm designing something as a mechanical engineer and I'm using that, I cannot afford to assume Especially if my, the thing I'm designing has to do with human life. I can't assume. I must know that what I'm using is proven. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, why I like the gospel is because there's no assumption about the gospel. There's no assumption. The gospel works. I said the gospel works. And there's no situation in your life that the gospel cannot deal with. See, this is what has made me, in fact, this is what, when I started understanding Christianity the way I'm teaching it now, it started making me excited about God and excited about Christianity. And excited about the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. So it doesn't matter your age, your stage of life, it doesn't matter your gender, and there, by the way, there are only two genders, male and female. It does not matter your affiliations. If you understand how something works, it will work for you. Just like that automobile, if you enter the automobile, it does not care whether you're African, whether you're American, whether you're black, white, what your gender is, whatever. As long as you can drive it, it will work for you. Are you here, somebody? So something is going to work for you this morning. <laughs> We're giving you something that will work for you this morning. You see, don't live your life with assumption. Don't live your life with assumption. Now, I'm just making some statements this morning. You know, we only have about an hour, an hour and a half, so... But I'm just making introductory statements. I'm hoping that we can come back to a time where we can start having weekly meetings. Because, but right now we're limited to monthly meetings. But let me, just, let me just make that statement. Don't live your life based on assumption. And then I said life is spiritual. That means life has a spiritual root. And the Bible unfolds to us the working of life. The Bible takes the veil away and shows us what is happening behind the scenes. Praise the Lord. Shows us what is happening, shows us what we need to do, shows us how we can correct certain things, and shows us how we can get certain results. Hallelujah. So that is the thought behind foundations of deliverance. Glory to God forevermore. Now let's go please to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61, I'll read three verses, verses 1 to 3. This is a passage of scripture that our Lord Jesus Christ quoted at the start of his ministry. At the start of his ministry, he quoted this scripture. In Luke chapter 4, after his 40 days of fasting, when he was now being revealed to the world, when he started his ministry, he actively started his ministry. He stopped being a carpenter and he entered fully. His, his assignment started fully, publicly. He quoted in the synagogue he went to in Nazareth this scripture. And he told them that this scripture he was quoting was himself, was describing himself and his ministry. Now look at this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because. Why? That's, that word because me, means why. Why is the spirit of the Lord God upon me? He has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. You know what meek means? Meek means humility. When we talk about meekness, you mean, meekness means that you, 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 you have a position. You have a position that your mind can be changed. You have a position that you can be taught. Now, one thing about the gospel is that when the gospel comes to you, it's so simple you can easily throw it away. For example, when somebody has been having a health challenge or a situation in life for 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, and, and somebody comes under the anointing and says, be healed. And somebody says, is that all it takes? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody comes, oh, pastor, some things have been after me. Look at this, my business, this, my business, that. And then somebody can just look at you and say, go and prosper. You see, the gospel is so simple that you can complicate it. Somebody said, after, you mean all of these things I've been facing, so, somebody will just come and speak words and that's the end of it? You see, you see, the gospel only works for the meek. 
People whose mind can be changed. Because it does not take God 20 years to fix 20 years problem. Oh, hallelujah. No, it does not. No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter how long you've been struggling in it. It is your response to the gospel that will start changing things. Hallelujah. And the gospel is good news. And let me, let me, let me continue here. Thank you, Lord. So just keep that in your mind, though. Meekness. Meekness instructs us to understand that it doesn't matter how long we've been in a situation. The answer is not as complicated as what we've been going through. Now, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. You see the assignment of the Messiah. And every one of us has that assignment in one way or the other who are following after Jesus. To proclaim liberty. I love that other one. To bind up the brokenhearted. Now, can we go back to the beginning? Let me, let me, let me read it again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Hallelujah. Good tidings, good news. So, in Helia Miracle Service today, I've come to announce good news to you. God is intervening in your case today. I know you came here with an expectation. That which you seek is not in me, but it's in our God. And he has anointed me. Yeah, that which you seek is not in me, but it's in the anointing that's upon me. Glory to God forevermore. So today, something is going to enter your situation. Something is going to dislodge what Satan has put in place in your life. Now, you just need to hear these words and believe them. I hear somebody. That's why the Spirit of God has anointed us. To preach good tidings to the meek. Good tidings is not... What, what is good news to a poor man that you will continue your poverty? What is good tidings to somebody who has been going through a health challenge that, um, that God is trying to teach you something through your health challenge? No. The good news to a sick man is that you're healed. The good news to somebody who has been struggling in lack is that God has intervened and you from today, you will start to prosper. I hear somebody. The good news to somebody who has been challenged in their destiny is that your destiny has been contended for by the Lord and you are free. So I'm here today to say it. And let me say it, that the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me this morning. Glory to God. And I'm declaring good news. Praise the name of the Lord. But that which you seek, my brother, my sister, is not in me, but it's in the anointing upon me. And the Lord has anointed me this morning. He has anointed me to preach or proclaim. The anointing comes on us to speak. Words are our tools. So don't be waiting for one fantastic time during this service. As I'm talking now, healing is coming to you. As I'm talking now, deliverance is coming to you. You say, Pastor, where is the answer I'm looking for? Is in the words I'm speaking to you. These words are spirits. John chapter 6 verse 63. You know, because I'm not speaking my own words today. I'm speaking the words of he that has sent me. John 6, 63, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. But the words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. So inside of what I'm telling you today is prosperity. Inside of what I'm telling you today is healing. Inside of what I'm telling you today is advancement. Some of you are going to leave this place and something will be different. Something will be altered in your body. Something will be altered. So that's why we're anointed to speak. To speak, to speak, to proclaim good tidings, not our own words. The good tidings is the gospel, is the gospel. Now, quickly, let's go to Isaiah 52, 52 verse 7. Isaiah 52 verse 7. Oh, glory. I said, glory. Somebody, the anointing is picking somebody up today. See, the anointing is changing somebody's lowly estate today. Now, let me tell you, God is one kind of a God. You can't, you can't put him in a box. Sometimes you come seeking prosper. You, you come speak, sometimes you come seeking a change in your finances, but he'll, he'll not just move in your finances. He, he knows that you have a family problem. He'll move there as well. So today I'm hearing my heart brought, I'm hearing my heart multiple miracles. Some of you think that healing is your situation, but he'll not just heal you, but he'll prosper you as well. Oh, glory to God forevermore. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit tonight. I'm hearing multiple operations of the anointing tonight. And it's going to come as the words I'm speaking. These words I'm speaking to you. These words I'm speaking to you. Look at this. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That's the gospel. That publisheth peace. And there's no peace between God and man outside of Jesus Christ. That bringeth. Look at. No, no, no. I'm not finished. That bringeth good tidings of good. Hi. See, you need to get a Bible and go and look at this for yourself. 
That's what the Bible calls the gospel. He said, good tidings that publisheth peace. Peace is that there's nothing broken because there's no more. When you receive Jesus, there's no more war between you and God. And if there's no more war between you and God, then, then no war is permitted around about your life. See, that publisheth peace. That brings good tidings of good. That publisheth or declares salvation. Salvation. Salvation covers every area of life. First and foremost, salvation is that we have been reconciled. When we receive Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled to God. There is no more war between us and God. And now that we have been reconciled to God, every area of our life has the right to experience peace and settlement. Are you here somebody? That publish, then we get good tidings of good. That publisheth salvation. Glory to God forevermore. Now let's go back. Okay, let's see. Is, has the verse ended? Is, I see a, okay. That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Oh, hallelujah. You know what thy God reigneth? God is in charge. Are you here, somebody? God is in charge. Oh, all is well. All is well. God is in charge. All is well. I said, God is in charge. All is well. Now, you know, many times we have to go through this route for people to know how we receive. His words. His anointed words. Now let's go back again to Isaiah 61, verse 2. It is anointed words that carry the anointing. So many times people are waiting in a service because they don't understand how God operates. His words, his words that God uses. You see, even when we minister to people, anywhere we minister, we must speak words. It's these words that are heard, believed, and received that begin to change things. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's lowly estate has been converted this morning. <laughs> now, to proclaim, you see, proclaim means to speak. The acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. That's the day in which God is judging the works of darkness. To comfort all that mourn. Hallelujah. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Hallelujah. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Glory to God forevermore. So as I'm speaking to you now, forget about how you got to where you are now. Or the, stop, stop, stop sitting down and trying to process any challenge or problem. Just focus on the answer right now. And the answer is what I'm declaring to you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, like I said, we're talking about foundations of deliverance. In other words, things that have been put in place, the reason for deliverance. Now, we, let, me, let me go about it this way, Lord, as, as the Lord helps. Let's look at the things that caused or gave opportunity for oppression or captivity in the first place. Because deliverance is turning around a situation where people could not reach their full potential because of Satan involvement. So what caused the involvement of the devil in the first place? That's very important. Are you here somebody? Very important. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Just follow me. Because this is very important. Very important. Because when you are believing God for help, you, you, must, you must have some knowledge. Are you here somebody? Lord, God help me. Yeah, it's wonderful. He hears your voice. But God, God functions with knowledge. Are you here somebody? You must understand that you have a right to call to God, out to God for help. And you must understand why God intervenes in people's situation. Glory to God forevermore. Look at this. For all have sinned, say all, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God's right to bless. God's right to improve. All have sinned. Now, let's go back to Romans 5. I'm going to tell you right from the start that the foundation of true deliverance is in the gospel. It's in the gospel. It's not in any man-made philosophy. Are you here, somebody? It's not, being part of, it's not being part of any association or group. The foundation of deliverance is first and foremost found in the gospel. Being connected to Christ. That's the foundation. Amen. I said amen. And God is no respecter of persons. Now look at verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. Look at this. 
Romans 3, 23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now look at Romans 5, 6. For yet, when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now look at this. The apostle Paul is talking to the church in Rome. He said there was, there was a time when he said we, he's talking about the entire human race. So. All of us at a certain time were without strength. That strength, your strength is not your physical capabilities. Your strength is your ability to appear before God and access his help. That's your strength. Do you know that you can never be defeated if you can access God's help? I don't care what it is. If you can access God's strength and help, you can never be defeated in life. Nothing, there's nothing that can stand God's power. You, you agree with me? What can stand God's power? If it's God we're talking about. Can sickness stand God's power? Is there any situation that God, thank God for our dear sister, Minister Nana, sharing about, I mean, exhausting us and blessing us in that song. There's nothing to, nothing that God can do. Praise the name of the Lord. So he said, yet when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly. In other words, there was a time, he's talking about a time when in Adam, we didn't have strength. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now let's look at the interpretation. Please continue. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet per adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But look at verse 8. But God commanded his love towards Dunka Gomwok. That us, put your name there. God commanded his love towards us. He, how did he do it? While we were yet sinners, you see, Christ died for us. Before we even knew we needed help, God had already made the provision for it. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, he said Jesus Christ is, was a lamb, as a, given as a lamb slain from the foundations of the world. He said God commanded the love of God, make preparation for us before we, need, we knew we needed his help. Oh my God. Kai. While I was yet a sinner, when I was yet out of fellowship with God, God out of his love for me made provision for me to become his child. And enjoy his benefit. How much more now I'm in the family? Oh, glory to God. So if you're not in the family, you can become a member of the family. How do you become a member of the family? By receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Are you here somebody? Now that's the foundation for deliverance. God commanded his love towards me. Put your name there. In that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Now look at verse 9. Much more then. Now that I'm justified, just as though I'd never sinned, by his blood or death, I shall be saved from anger through him. Now verse 10. Verse 10. For if when I was God's enemy, God reconciled me to himself by the death of his son, how much more now being reconciled, I shall be saved by his life. And that word saved means healed, it means to prosper, it means to be preserved. Every good thing. Now verse 11. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Verse 12. Whereby, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Just keep me there. Hi. So death passed upon all men, for that all men have sinned. You understand this? Just keep me there. Romans 3, don't go to Romans 3.23. Just, I'll just quote it. Romans 3.23 said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now he's explaining to us what he meant by that statement. That because of Adam's original sin, hello, death passed upon all men. And that is why the Bible said all men have sinned. Because Adam is the first fruit and if the first fruit is corrupted, everyone else is corrupted. So in Adam... We have died, not just physically, but spiritually. We have been separated from God. Are you here, somebody? Now, look at this. Look at this. We're talking about foundations for deliverance. Now, you must understand where the problem comes from. Praise the name of the Lord. Anybody that is not in Christ, I'm not, I do not say anybody that is, born, that is not born in a Christian home. You can be born in a Christian home and not be in Christ. You need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to receive him as your savior for yourself. 
Now, the moment you do that, look at what the Bible says here. He said, death, when, because of Adam's sin, death, this word death, it means the right of Satan to afflict, the right of Satan to claim you as his own. That's why anybody that dies outside of Christ, your last breath here is your first breath in the presence of the devil in hell. No negotiation. But the reverse is true. If you die in Christ, your last breath here is your first breath in the presence of God. Are you here, somebody? So because of Adam's sin, every human or mortal by right is under Satan's dominion. Satan can do whatever he wants with them. Are you here, somebody? Glory to God. That's frightening. <laughs> that is really frightening. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Because of Adam's sin, Satan has a right to afflict. Thank you, Lord. That's the, that's the thing there. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all men have sinned. Wow. Glory to God forevermore. Now look at Romans 6. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Give me a moment. Thank you, Lord. The free gift of God is eternal life. Okay, let's continue. Um, go to 2 Corinthians 4 4. Satan is called the God of this world. I know some people know where I'm looking for. Just, just help me out. Um, I want to show them that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where is it? Yeah. Romans 6 23. The wages of sin is death. Hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's it. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. I said thank you, Lord. Now, what was God's remedy to this? And why did Jesus come? You see, when we read in Isaiah chapter 61... Jesus was declaring the reason why he was anointed by the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Now we have seen this. Why Jesus came. Thank God he came to set the captives free. Glory to God forevermore. But look at what he did. Look at what he did. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Glory to God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 11. Okay, let's look at verse. Let's look at verse 9. But we see Jesus made, who was made a little lower than the angels. Angels here is actually, the word, it's actually, okay, let's, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me leave that for now. A little lower than the, than the angels for the suffering of death. So that he could come and die for us. He was crowned with glory and honor. That he should, by the grace of God. Are you with me? Taste death for every man. Let's, go, let's, let's proceed. What does that mean? That means Jesus came to do something. Jesus coming to this earth was for one reason. One primary reason. To Take upon himself the punishment that should have come on all of us because of Adam's sin and our connection with Adam's sin. Praise the name of the Lord. And he did it so that we would not need to experience it. Now look at this. I'm not saying that you not die physically. But I'm saying that the death I'm talking about here is that Satan's right of claim over you is broken. That's my point. Satan's right of claim over me is broken. This is very important too. Ah! You must know this one oh. Satan's right of claim over you is broken. For it became him whom 
for whom are all things and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make Jesus the captain of their salvation perfect through his suffering. Let's go ahead, verse 11. For both he that are sanctified and they that are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Let's continue. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Just continue. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given unto me, Therefore, signs are wonders. Now look at verse 14. For this reason then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus Christ himself took part of flesh and blood. So that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Just keep me there. So that through death, hallelujah, Jesus became like one of us, went through this world and lived a sinless life. And when he went on that cross, God put our sin on him. Look at this. Now, when he died and was raised from the dead, because he did not part, he, because he lived a sinless life, he was qualified to be a sacrifice for us. But then on that cross, God put our sin on him. 2 Corinthians 5.21. On that cross, God put my sin and your sin on him. And when my sin came on Jesus, the judgment for my sin came on Jesus as well. For God made Jesus sin for me, who knew no sin, that I might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus Christ took my sin on the cross of Calvary and the punishment for my sin was to go to hell on my behalf. He tasted death for me. So should Jesus tarry? I live out my life and finish God's, will, uh, God's assignment for my life and I close my eyes in physical death. I will open my eyes in the presence of God. I have even eternally delivered from hell and condemnation. Everybody that's in Christ. But the secondary part of that revelation is, now that you have been delivered from hell and Satan's right to afflict in hell, you have also been delivered from Satan's right to afflict here on this earth. You must believe that. God made Jesus Christ to be seen for me, who knew no sin, that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. So God has judged my sin in Jesus. And guess what? Because he has judged my sin in Jesus, he has declared me free from the penalty of sin. Now go back to Hebrews 2. I want to get something down there. Hebrews 2.14. Glory to God. Somebody in this congregation is, is just bringing me back. I need to go back to some basics again today. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, Jesus Christ himself, took part of the same so that through his death he might destroy. You know what that word destroy means? Destroy is a Greek word that means render, render ineffective. Or render inactive. Inactive. Or to shut down. When something is not active again, it is shut down. So Jesus' death on the cross did something to Satan's authority over anyone that receives Jesus. It shut down Satan's authority. You see, many people don't know this. Satan has no right to afflict you. All he can do is suggest to you. All he can do is attack you. But if he suggests to you and attack you and find that you don't know, that you have been delivered, then he will proceed. You can be a Christian without knowledge. If you're not a Christian, receive Jesus and be a Christian. After you become a Christian, the most important thing for you then is to gain knowledge about who you are and what God did for you in Christ. Because if you don't know, it's the same as knowing... Somebody said this. It was Mark Twain. Mark Twain, that writer, said this. He said, the one who knows how to read and doesn't read has no advantage over the one who doesn't know how to read. Knowing how to read should give you an advantage now. But if you know how to read and don't read, you, are, you and the one that doesn't know how to read, you are the same. So the Christian that does not, that, that's delivered, that does not know it, is no different from the one who is not even delivered. Satan will deal with you like an unbeliever because of what you don't know. But the Bible said that when Jesus tasted death, he did it for me in my place on that cross. Are you here somebody? Now, his death... Has res resurrection has rendered Satan's power zero. Glory to God forevermore. Oh, glory to God forevermore. I said, glory to God forevermore. I said, glory to God forevermore. Now, can, let me give you another example. <laughs> you know, all of our cell phones, if you have a phone, your phone cannot work unless it's connected to a network, right? Maybe you have a SIM card that MTN gives you. A SIM card that Glow gives you, SIM card that Airtel gives you. Now, whatever SIM card that you have gotten, you connect to the network, you've done what you need to do, you start buying their airtime. Isn't that right? But what if the network breaks down? 
like some time was it yesterday. Empty and start having problem. Do you know that no matter how wealthy you are, if you are an MTN network, if MTN has a problem, you are off. Glory to God. I'm telling you that what Jesus did for us is not that Satan has a problem, or Satan has been dislocated. It's not that he has a problem. His right to afflict has been removed. This word destroy means that God shut him down. He put off the network. Oh my God in heaven. He put off the network. Oh. He cannot kill you. Satan cannot kill you. You must, I want to tell you, he can't kill you. All he can do is show you yourself in coffee. You just say in the name of Jesus, you're too late. I know that Jesus has delivered me. Listen, he can't keep you poor. He can't keep you broke. Satan cannot do it. Oh my God. God has put off the network on Satan. Keep me here. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Oh my God. Say I believe. Say I'm a believing believer. I'm telling you that there's deliverance in these words today. They, somebody has been lifted from a lowly estate today. There's help in these words today. There's help. I said there's help. Help has come to your household. It has come by the gospel. You see, when you believe this thing, in the realm of the spirit, there will be reactions in your life. Things will just start reacting. Once you start believing these things, things start reacting in your life. God is no respecter of persons. So. Satan is sitting on your head. What's he doing there? Oh my God. When, you see, who has, Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, who has believed our report? Who has believed this message? It is the one that believes the message that will start seeing this power. Listen, when you start believing this thing, you'll be shocked. This same you, you'll start seeing the power of God flow in your life. This same you I'm talking to now. You'll start seeing the power of God flow in your life. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Somebody's coming out of their lowly estate. God is pulling somebody out today. God has put the network off on Satan. Satan, through ignorance, has glorified death. But here, the Bible said, for as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same flesh and blood. Jesus took part of flesh and blood so that through death he might destroy, he might render ineffective, render powerless, deactivate him that had the power of death. That's the devil. Even if you have network and your phone is dead, that's it. Maybe that's the best way I can describe Satan's case. It's like a phone that is dead. That's how sin is. That's how sickness is. But you know something? You have got to believe it. If you don't believe it, I can't help you today. That's why I said what you desire is not in me, but is in, in the anointing upon me. But even the anointing upon me, it works through the gospel. The Spirit is upon me. Jesus himself was limited to the gospel. The Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to declare this truth that if my men believe, they accept it. He's limited. We are limited by what men believe. Now, if you have not been hearing the real gospel, start hearing it. Come to a, go to a good church where you hear the gospel. Because let me tell you, the church you go to will affect your, your destiny. The words you're hearing. Everything in life is words. Everything is words. Who has believed our report? Who has believed this message? Somebody's lowly estate is changing today. Are you here, somebody? I don't care how long that case is. There is an anointing that's going to deal with the fundamental issues today. Fundamental. Are you going to be released? You're going to be free. See, see, see. All these nonsense dreams. All these nonsense visitations in your life, they're ending today. Satan has no right. He's a thief. Do you know that a thief never comes to your house when, until they perceive that they have the advantage? Why? Because they're illegal. Thief will not come to your house when there are people everywhere, when there are lights everywhere. No, he has no right. The one that has the right will come through the front gates. But the one that doesn't have the right will be looking. That's Satan. He's a thief. But knowledge catches him. You must believe this. That because of Jesus' death, he destroyed him that, look at this word, had the power of death. Had is past tense. As we stand today, now, in time, Satan does not have the power of death. He doesn't have it. You see, where do we know this? The gospel. When you believe it, it will start working in your life. 
So Satan can't set time and day to kill you. Can't visit you and show you coffee and say, I'm killing you. He does not have the power of death. And let me tell you, sickness, poverty, all those things, they emanate from the realm of death. Okay, I said Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Colossians 1.12. Then we'll come back here. Woo! Glory. Glory. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Both the Jew and the Greek. For there in the righteousness of God is revealed from one level of faith to another. You see, it's these words that here that change our lives. No one of us is more special than the other. What makes anybody special is what they know and they choose to believe. You know the same thing. You choose to believe it. That's it. You enter the rank of the special ones too. Are you here somebody? Colossians 1.12. <laughs> Giving thanks unto the Father which has qualified us or made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Like I did for over 30 minutes this morning. As, as I just woke up, I said, Lord, I thank you because I sleep and I wake because of your mercy. And then I just started declaring, Lord, I thank you because you're good to me and your mercy over my life and just forever. I just kept chanting it. I just kept chanting it. I want to renew my mind. That when my, I open the morning, I want to put God's thoughts in my mind. Eh? Devotion is not religion. I need to go into that day with an attitude of a conqueror. Let me tell you, I'm sure most of you are like me. When you first wake up in the morning, you don't feel too good. I'm not talking about sickness. You, you, you're wondering where you are. You're feeling one kind. Should I get up? Should I get up? See, open your mouth and speak words. It will control your body. You're just wondering, how is it today? What's going on? You know, this guy, one guy. Open your mouth and start declaring God's word. I said, Lord, you're good to me. And everything started changing when I started speaking. My body started feeling like getting up. Glory to God. And your mercy endures forever. As I did that, then from inside of me, a wellspring of tongues came out. You engage the day. You don't sit down and be waiting. What does the day hold? What does it hold? You tell it what it holds. Giving thanks unto the Father, he has qualified me to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in life. Say, I'm qualified. Say, Christ has qualified me. Say, Christ has qualified me. By his death and his resurrection, he has qualified me. See, it's not about you any longer. It's about what Christ has done. So the healing power of God will flow through your body today. Something's going to touch your bank account today. Something's going to touch your family today. They call it incurable. Something's going to touch it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Giving thanks unto the Father. He has qualified us to be partakers, to enjoy, to take our share of the inheritance of the saints in life. Look at verse 13. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. He has delivered. You see, note the, the tense. Has. Say has. Say has. Say it has been done. See, if you're in Christ, you're delivered now. Right now, you're delivered. Say, Pastor, it doesn't look like it. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by what God has said. Not See, when you believe it and speak it, you will become it. It will start showing up. He has delivered us from the authority of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of his love. In whom we have redemption. Even the forgiveness of sins. I've been delivered. I've been transferred. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. You see, if you leave Nigeria and go to America right now and you commit a crime in America, they'll, they'll judge you not by Nigerian law, but American law. Because when you leave Nigeria and go to America, though you're a Nigerian citizen, it's the laws of America that are binding on you now. Are you here, somebody? So you must believe this. You must believe. That's why the Bible says, who has believed our report? When you start believing it, you start seeing these realities. You start becoming manifested in your life. You must believe that you have been delivered in Christ from the authority, power, authority of darkness. You have been translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of God's love. So Satan has no right to come by your house and drop any nyama nyama that he wants on your life. But you must learn to say, no devil, no! Because if you don't put your mouth, uh, go and buy land now. Don't put fence. Leave it for five, these days, six months, one year. You come and see somebody build on it. You know these guys are rascals. They'll just come and build on it and say, let's go. 
Once you build, they feel like you won't want God. Okay, settle, give me money. Yeah, yeah, people. <laughs> if, you, if, you don't, if you have something and you don't secure it, sit down, enter. So, so I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I've been delivered. Thank God you've been delivered. Thank God. But Satan is not going to take you. Satan is not going to sit down and assume that you know it. He will test it. He will test your knowledge. He will test it. So, God, why is this happening to me? <laughs> You're a card-carrying member of the human race. That's why it's happening to you. Nobody under this sun, in, under heaven, is not challenged. But when the devil comes, you must know what to answer him. Glory to God. I say you must know what to answer him. Even Jesus, our Lord and Master, hot in prayer and fasting, Satan manifested. If you are the Son of God, do this. And the Bible said, Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written again. And the Bible said, Satan left him for a season. That means the rascal came back. Oh. That is Jesus, our Lord. How about you? Better wake up. Oh. Bible said in James 4, 7, submit yourself therefore unto God. Believe what the word of God said. Are you a somebody? Then resist the devil and he will flee. He will. Glory. Nobody's dying under the sun, my boss here. Nobody's going anywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. You're secured. I say you are secured. He has delivered you from the authority of darkness and he has moved you into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of his Lord. You need to just sit down with this scripture until you internalize it. Until when you start dreaming now, it's no longer snake. You, snake chasing you. You're the one chasing snake. And then you know scripture has entered. <laughs> he's chasing me, he's chasing me. When will you start chasing him now? Oh, I remember the day when I was the one chasing the lion, the lion wasn't chasing me. <laughs> he said, what changed? Nobody laid hands on me. I started believing the scriptures. You see, when you put it inside of you, it will start answering. Even in your dream, the scriptures will start contending for you. That's what you need. Not all this one that you have. I mean, raise prayer warrior to be doing. In fact, you don't need prayer warrior in your life. You need prayer champion. Prayer warrior, they never get an answer prayer. You need prayer champions. But all this one that you're always raising prayer point, prayer point, prayer point. Hey, be praying, be praying, be praying. <laughs> Most of this you're praying, eh? You don't know this. You don't, you don't know it or you know it and you don't believe it. Knowing and believing the word of God will settle so many things in your life. Some of you, you will just walk out. That sickness that looks like it, you will walk out of it. You will walk out of it. He has delivered us from the authority of darkness. And he has moved us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of his love. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Now let's go back to Hebrews 2.14. Thank you, Lord. We're talking on the foundations of deliverance. Oh. It's what Christ has done for us. Hello? <laughs> I said, hello? Something has been put in place. Waiting for me to believe. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. If after healing and miracle service today, I just feel like eating Mama Calabar's a banana fang. Honestly, I don't know anything about how to cook eba and afang and perewinko. I can make eba. But afang with perewinko, I know nothing about it. But how many of you know I don't need to know anything about it to enjoy it? My God. All I need to go is to go to Mama Kalaba, order my eba. I said, Mama, give me the one that has perewinko. I know all of you people in the north, you don't like all that one. You don't understand. You don't, you don't like to be meeting hard things. So you don't know. When you meet, you just stop. And <laughs> you see this gospel. I was not there when Jesus died. It's not required for me to be there. What's required is for me to believe it. I believe what the Bible said. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Some of us have been living in this thing for decades. I know that when you believe it, it will work for you. I don't know how tithing how works. I don't know how giving works. But I'm, a tith I'm tithing, I'm giving, and money is coming to me. It's the money that I want to be seeing. I don't need to know this. I don't even, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I don't, when I'm driving, I'm not thinking about spark plug, this one. 
I just want to start that car. Let it be moving. So today, just receive this gospel. Glory to God forevermore. <laughs> I don't even want to know how that disease will go. All I know is that Christ took it. The Bible says he took it. I mean, I believe it. That's what's required. Are you here, somebody? So this thing, this thing, eh, is a preparation from heaven. You enjoy it. See, just like I go and pay money and, they, and they'll give me that food. Your, the payment you make is believing the gospel. It's not money. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You see, but this is, this is the thing. It's, it's not more than what I'm telling you now. But you must stay with these scriptures. You must stay with these scriptures. Let it enter you. So that when the devil comes, it is this scripture that will answer him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kai, something's really pulling on me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus Christ himself also took part of the same, that through death, he might disable the devil, shut him down, deactivate him, deactivate, render him useless. That had, past tense, the devil had the power of death. He no longer has it. So the issue is that if he doesn't have it, who has it? Jesus has it. And you know, he will, he's not going to use it against you. He will use it, he'll use it for you. Let's, let's complete this. Then we'll go to Revelation 1. That had the power of death. That's the devil. And look at this. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I won't lie to you. I used to fear death. Though. You know, it's not just Africa, but especially Africa. Africa has made a culture out of death. Every nation, people fear death. But Africa has made a culture out of it. Praise the name of the Lord. Africa has made a culture out of it through witchcraft, through the occult, through all kind of thing. But see, when you get into the scriptures, and you begin to read scriptures that you have been delivered from the authority of Satan, and you begin to read these kind of scriptures that Satan used to have the power of death, he no longer has it. That means all he can do is he can just suggest to you, but he can't carry it out without your agreement. Do you know how powerful you are? If you don't agree, it won't happen. God has made you so powerful that if you don't agree for him to bless you, he can't even bless you. So if God is limiting himself to your agreement, well, who is the devil? Say in the name of Jesus. Say no! no. Say I don't agree! No. Don't agree, oh. Don't agree. I don't agree to sickness. I don't agree to premature death. I don't agree to lack. Somebody is jumping out today. You see, we will minister to people today, oh, but after you leave this place, you need, to, you need to remember this thing I'm telling you. So when the devil speaks to you, you answer him without fear. I used to be so afraid of death. Because I didn't know this. So all their lifetime, they were subject to bondage. Glory to God. You see, fear brings bondage. Fear brings torment. But when you know, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think the Lord is helping us. I know he is. Somebody, somebody's lowly estate is being changed today. I see the power of God raising somebody today. And I'm hearing in my heart, there are multiple interventions today. You see, God is not just going to fix one thing today. He's going to fix several things. <laughs> oh, the gospel picks men up from a lowly place and sets them up. So who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Let's believe, believe it. Say, I believe it. I believe it. Do you know the good thing about it? No devil can stop you from believing. Even God, he has the power to, but he has refused to. He said, I'm, I've made you a free moral agent. I will not, so whatever you want to believe, believe. So if, it, if, if God will give me that kind of right, how, how can you be open your mouth and say, the devil made you do it? The devil. Which devil? It's what you don't understand. Now look at verse um, 18. 18. 18. Glory to God. In fact, I think some people are going to deliver themselves today. You're going to lay hands on yourself and command that devil to leave. We will be there to assist you. You will hear yourself talking to the devil. Some people don't have confidence to come to talk to the devil. <laughs> some people say, eh, Devil, Jesus say, no, Jesus, say, Devil in the name of Jesus say, say Devil, Jesus say. <laughs> so, in case it doesn't work, go and meet Jesus or leave me. <laughs> no, you say, Devil in the name of Jesus. Devil, Jesus said. <laughs> I am he. Let's go to verse 17. Hallelujah. When I saw him, 
John is talking about when he saw the Lord. I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. Kai, I'm telling somebody here today, Fear not. That disease won't kill you. Fear not. You will come out of that situation. Jesus said, I'm Alpha Omega. I'm the first and the last. From here to there and in between, there's nothing about this situation that's bigger than me. That's more complicated than me. And you're in my hands. Say, fear not. I am the first and the last. Let's proceed, please. I am he that liveth and was dead. You see, I am God. From the deathless past, eternity past, I've been alive. But I came into the flesh for the sake of your redemption. So I'm he that liveth. I was dead. I came to die for your sake. Now I'm alive. And nobody's killing me no more. I'm alive forevermore. And because I live, you live also. He said, amen. That amen is so be it. Now look at this. And I have the keys of hell and death. So who has them? When Satan said, I'll kill you. Who has the keys? Does he have the ability? No. He's, he wants you to be afraid and to agree. Without your agreement, nothing can happen. Satan doesn't have the keys, the authority of hell and death. Even hell itself. Jesus is Lord over hell. My God. <laughs> Satan has been stripped of his illegal authority. That's why I want you to believe. That I want to, we're talking about foundations for deliverance. Who has believed our report? This is the gospel. You must believe it. If you, if you don't believe it, Satan will keep toying around with you. And let me tell you, if you don't believe it, false ministers will keep toying around with you. False ministers. Any minister that is worth his salt will put the power back in your hand. Because Jesus put it back in our hand. He said, I have the keys of hell and death. The authority over hell and death is in the hand of Jesus Christ. Are you here, somebody? He's in the safest hands. Glory to God. And you know what? He has delegated those keys to you. I have the keys of hell and death. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I remember this. This revelation came so strong to me. I you know we keep growing in the word of God. Nobody ever graduates from this school. Till you leave this earth, you have to keep growing in faith. I remember several years ago, I was coming back home from, from the U.S. And the flight I was taking from a particular airport into Europe, before from Europe, now we'll come back to Nigeria. Like a joke. I'm trying to show you how Satan operates. As I was just going for them to, you know, they call it the check-in counter where they'll look through my passport, they'll look through my boarding pass, make sure that I'm the one and that they confirm my seat, confirm me as a passenger. As I was just, as I was just going there, in fact, I, was, I looked at the plane, huge aircraft. I looked at it through the, you know, glass windows of the airport. I looked at it, that's the plane. I knew that was the plane we were boarding. As I looked at it, one, one thought came into my mind. What if this aircraft just explodes over the ocean? So I just laughed. I said, Satan, nonsense. Was, is it me you're trying with this kind of thought? I just said, get out of here in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? As I was going to the counter, the thing came back. I resisted the devil. How do you resist the devil? You resist the devil. The devil comes to you through thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imagination. When he comes, don't allow it to rest. That's where the fight is. Oh. Don't allow it to rest. When that thought comes, say in the name of Jesus, I cancel that. And then speak God's word. That's your fight. Don't allow it to set, settle. As I entered into the aircraft, the thoughts began more aggressive. So I knew something was happening. So I started rearranging myself. I said, I'm not going to take this casual again. I started I start speaking God's word. More, more consistent, under my breath. I'm praying in other tongues. Speaking God's word. Declaring God's word. Speaking in other tongues. See, by the time I sat on my seat, this is a jumbo jet that has two stories. I was sitting on the second the upper level. Upper level. It's like a house with two stories. I was sitting on the upper level. And I sat where we were sitting with just two seats. So I was sitting at, near the aisle. As I, as I sat down, sweat started coming. Ah, ah, I knew that Satan was up to something. As I just put my belt. I don't know how to describe this to you. Something sat on me. is a spirit of fear. 
This is not just thoughts now. Something sat on me. I was sweating. The plane was just about to start moving. Something sat on me. Do you know what? I saw, I saw, I, I don't want to tell you I saw a vision, but I, it was clear before me. I saw that, ex, that aircraft exploding over the Atlantic Ocean. And I saw the news. Wow. Boeing 747 jets explodes over the Atlantic Ocean. I saw it in my spirit. I said, I have a fight now. I have a fight now. See, Satan will show you things. But you've got to know that just because you see it and it can be clear, it may be even a vision. If it does not agree with God's word, it is to be cancelled. That's where the fight is. In fact, that fight is proof that you have faith. You don't just sit down. I said, what will I do? Do you know that fear overtook me? I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was, it was, I knew it was a, it, I knew it was, it was a siege of hell. It sat on me. Do you know, I did not know when I unbuckled my belt. The aircraft has started taxiing. The air horses, everybody was sitting down. I didn't care about them. I unbuckled my belt. And I got up. I asked myself, where am I, where are you going? You know, when fear comes on you, it will start controlling your life. It has torment. Ha. My God. I'll tell you this one. So I just said, Lord, what do I do? I just, I found myself, I was up. Before I knew what was happening, I was already up walking. So I said, I better just walk to the convenience. So I just walked to the convenience on the top. So I just walked and I opened the door and I shut it. I said, God, what do I do? God, what do I do? God, what do I do? I said, I started speaking other tongues. I claiming the peace of I said, God, help, Spirit of God, help me now. Because I know I can't just be quoting scripture from my head. I need tailor-made words. Holy Ghost bullets. That's when the Holy Ghost just gave me. Sir, I can't remember studying it. Maybe I did. But I honestly can't remember studying it. That's when Isaiah 31, 11 just came to my mind. I didn't know Isaiah 31, 11. I just started hearing these words. Let me, let me get it. I'll share two testimonies with you, then we'll close. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Ay, 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 ay. You're going to walk in God's liberty and freedom. No, not Isaiah, Jeremiah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Jeremiah 31, 11. I couldn't, I, I can't remember my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't remember if I had studied, maybe I had studied this before, but it jumped out of my spirit. See, the Holy Ghost is our helper. You see, when, when is one thing for thoughts to be in your mind, is another thing, when, when a spirit of fear grips you, you need to ask the spirit of God to give you tailor-made words to respond to him. The devil. Look at this. I just heard these words in my spirit. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than him. My God. So I just took out my phone. I just took out my phone. And I just started searching. Ransom, this, this. Then I just saw it. Isaiah 31, 11. Then immediately, Hebrews 2, 14. That one, jumped, this one I quoted, jumped into my spirit. Then Revelation chapter 1, jumped into my spirit. You know, I started speaking these words. The aircraft was still moving. Oh. They were taxiing for takeoff. I didn't care. Oh. The Lord has redeemed Jacob. The Lord has redeemed Dunka and ransomed Dunka from the hand of him that was stronger than him. You know what a ransom is? It's like they kidnap somebody and then they give money and then they release the person. That money is the ransom. Jesus is my ransom. Jesus is your ransom. The right to afflict has been broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I started quoting this scripture. I started quoting Revelation 1. I started quoting Revelation 1, 18 and 19. I started quoting Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. You know, something rose up in my heart. And I started shouting because by then the aircraft engines were roaring. I was shouting. I said, Satan, I'm not dying today. I'm not dying tomorrow. I'm not dying anytime soon. You're not killing me today, tomorrow, anytime. These scriptures rose up in my spirit. My God in heaven. And I said, Satan, just because of that, you know, every aircraft has a timeline. You know, they, they, they service them. Usually it's about 30, 35 years, depending on the make. And then they'll retire the aircraft. Even though nothing's wrong with it, they'll retire. They'll say it has gone past its lifespan of use. I said, as long as this aircraft is in use, nobody will have accident here. Nobody will die. I said, not just me. But I extend it to anybody that will even ever be on this aircraft. By the time I finish, I don't, I don't know how long I was there. Maybe five minutes. You know, this kind of time, five minutes can look like one hour. So I don't know. All I know, I was battling that spirit of fear. The peace of God came upon me. I went back to my seat like a king. Sat down. 
I know there was serious turbulence on that flight. Oh. That big aircraft was shaking over the Atlantic Ocean. I was just smiling. I was just smiling. I said, I took care of that rascal, man. When we landed in Paris, I said, Satan, look at me in Paris. I'm from Paris. I'm going back to Nigeria. Devil is devil everywhere. Oh. Not just in African devil. It's American devil too. But the good things are the word of God will deal with him anywhere. Africa, Asia, America, deal with him. So that's why I'm talking to you today. The foundation of deliverance is to know that Jesus Christ was a ransom for you. Ransom for you. Ransom. Believe it. I hear somebody. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Something happens when you know these truths. When you decide to believe them. In spite of your feelings. And you start declaring them out of your mouth. Something begins to happen. Hallelujah. See, something about fear left my life that day forever. Okay, I remember. Thank you, Lord. I'll share the second one. The second one was immediately after my late elder sister died. She died in 2003. We had not yet, I don't think, I think we had just buried her or just about to bury her. And I was still investigating my mind. Because the Lord had put, started putting some things in my heart, I started praying and fasting and making intercession for her. And standing in faith with her and talking and all those kind of things. So when that happened, I was trying to, what is going on? What is going on? The Lord explained some things to me which are private and personal. But something happened. Now let me tell you something. I'm going to end with this. F faith is transferable. The spirit of faith. You see, that's why your company matters. If you're around fornicators, it's easy for that spirit to fall on you. If you're around liars and cheaters, that spirit will fall on you. If you're around integrous people, that spirit will fall on you. If you're around people of faith, that spirit will fall on you. So your innermost circle is important for your life. That very important. Oh. Now, just like the spirit of faith is transferable or contagious. You know, the common cold is contagious. Yes, we, we, we walk in divine health and healing. I know that. But naturally speaking, at the shower, cold, cough is contagious. Now, just like the spirit of faith is contagious, the spirit of fear is contagious. Now, let me tell you something. If Satan kills one person in the family, he, the spirit of death will want to go to the next person. You have to stop it. You hear me, my sister? Stop it. Just because something happened does not mean it must replicate with you. You are individual before God. We're not condemning anybody. You are individual before God. You have your own walk with God. Don't use somebody else's experience to say, if it happened to this one, who am I? No, you are a child of God. So, I understand that, that when Satan succeeds, I, I saw that in my family. In the year 2000, and, okay, that was 2003, 2003. I will come out praying. This was just about, it's either, I, I'm not sure if we had buried my sister or just after we had buried my sister. I'll come out, I, I'll be inside the room like this. Something will come on me and start suffocating me. I'll just feel like my life is going. See, Satan is a dubious spirit. But you must stop him in his tracks. Stand in what Christ did for you and stop it. Do you know, it came on me. I was gasping for breath. I felt like my body. I got up, praying in other tongues in the parlor. I left the parlor, went out into our yard. Then something hit me. What are you doing? That was the Holy Ghost. The help of the Holy Ghost. Stand against this thing. So I, I got myself together. And I just calmed. I prayed in other tongues. I calmed myself down. You know, Satan can't handle peace. Once you start panicking, you're finished. Start praying in other tongues and calm yourself down. Receive the peace of God. I started reminding myself, Satan, I started going through these scriptures. You see, it worked for me on an aircraft. It will still work for me. I said, Satan, let me remind you, you had the power of death. You don't have it. Jesus has the power. As I was going that way, Satan, boom, he left. I said, I've got your number now. Glory to God forevermore. I said, glory to God forevermore. I said, glory to God forevermore. I said, glory to God forevermore. You will start new testimonies in your house. Your family, you start having new testimonies. I don't care what there was, where there was bad news. It will now be replaced by good news. Good news will be the new legacy of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies will be the new legacy of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care how many people were poor. From you, there will be a generation of wealth. I don't care how many failures there were. From you, there will be a generation of successes. I don't care how many people died. After, from you, death has stopped. I said it has stopped. 
You say maybe the ones that died seem to be more anointed than me, seem to know the word of God more than me. No, you don't know what God told them. You don't know what they did or did not do. You don't know that. And God will never share his dealings, his secrets with anybody to build faith in you. No, he won't. What God will do is give you your own faith by speaking to you. God will not tell you why somebody failed. So that, no, that's, God is a keeper of secrets. He will hide people's secrets. Faith comes by hearing God's word to you. Not by you investigating what happened to somebody else. So, people here today, you're starting new legacies. The kind of things they said never happened. It was not happening with you. Good things. I said good things. I said good things. You know why I'm sharing these testimonies with you? So you know that nobody is exempted. The most anointed man of God, we fight this same fight too. I'm telling you what happened to me personally. From my own personal stories. I hear somebody. So nobody is so immune, so anointed that they are immune to this thing. I'm trying to tell you that this devil we're talking about, he's tameable. He has been tamed by Jesus Christ. Now, all you need to do, the Bible said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not in yourself. That's why I said today that what you seek is not in me. The miracles you seek, the deliverance you seek today is not in me, but is in the anointing, and the Lord has anointed me. Glory to God. So forget all this. Anything you're seeing around, forget it. Build your own legacy and your own story by your faith in God. And God will respond to you. You see, we don't, we don't, we don't have faith in ourselves. We have faith in what Christ did for us. And then the power of God is activated. So today, somebody is moving from a lowly estate to a place of notoriety. Somebody is coming out into a place of visibility. Somebody, they're going to just start noticing you. Where they were passing by you, they'll start noticing you. Some of you, you're going to wake up and you're going to see that your body is steadily improving in health. You're going, you're going to just discover that those symptoms that used to be so life-threatening, you just start seeing they're subsiding. One day you wake up. If you keep believing this thing and declaring it, one day you wake up, you will look for it. You will not find it. Because Christ has taken care of it. You see, you don't need to know how to cook the soup. But when they cook the soup, you know how to eat it. Eh? Just eat it, sir. Just thank you, sir. Just enjoy it. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now make two statements. That will minister. Two statements. Number one. You see what happened? When Jesus took that, our sin on himself, Jesus fully paid for Adam's failures. So God canceled out Adam's failures for anybody in Christ. God has canceled out Adam's failures and opened you up to a lineage of favor. Are you here, somebody? Do you know something? When you cut off the head of the snake, the body might be shaking, but the sick snake is dead. Make no mistake. And I'm here to announce the head of the snake has been cut off. The head of that sickness has been cut off. Your body might be vibrating, but believe that the head has been cut off. Jesus has taken your sickness and your pains. The head of poverty has been cut off. Satan has no right to come and cut your life short. But you have a job to do. You have to fill your heart and mind with these scriptures. Sir, man, it will work for you. It will work for you. Glory to God. And then the Lord told me that this Friday, he told me about the, this healing school. He said that he's releasing a floodgate of favor upon his people. Amen. Sir, man, hear me. The favor of God will follow you today. The favor of God will follow you today. This favor will not just show up in your material life. It will show up in your health. You know, there's an aspect of favor that combats disease. There's an aspect of favor that combats satanic oppression. Whatever the oppression is today, you have come under a canopy of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. You see, we believe what Christ has done. We believe what Christ has done aggressively. And then things that don't happen normally start happening around about our lives. Sama, you cannot be stranded. No, you are not helpless. You are not a victim. So whatever the range of your concern today, we bring it under the canopy of the grace of God. We bring it under the canopy of the shed blood of Jesus. Whatever the range of your concern today, and I say to you again, I hear my heart that there are diverse, multiple interventions today. Not just one kind. 
diverse intervention. So whatever the range of your challenge, concern, or problem today, we bring it under the canopy of what Jesus Christ has done. You see why I'm preaching and sweating like this? This thing is real low. This gospel, you know how I wish that we could gather the whole cities. How I wish that we could be on every television program, every radio program. How I wish that we can just get this news to people. Because the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9, it is by knowledge the righteous shall be delivered. It's by knowledge. So can you imagine? That's why I said in the beginning, it is the gospel beautifies the meek. How can you just, you're reading the scripture, you believe scripture like this. But you see, when you start believing this thing, you will start seeing the power of God in your life. That's how you know this thing is real. When you start believing it, Satan is fighting for the world not to know this. Because the day you know it, and the day you stand your ground, and the day you insist on it, you just, you just see, it's like wind blowing over smoke. When wind blows over smoke, it disperses it. You will not even see the smoke again. That's how when you start believing this gospel concerning any area of your life, you start believing that because of what Jesus did, this situation can't stay like this. That's how a wind of God's mercy and favor will blow over that thing like, like smoke, like, like wind blowing over smoke, scattering it. When wind finishes with smoke, can you see the smoke again? But what, what instigates that wind of favor is your believing. Say, I believe. Say, I believe the gospel. I believe. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, concerning my life, my destiny, any issue or area of concern in my life today, the head of the serpent, the head of the snake has been cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. So when the head of the snake is cut off, that body will be shaking. It means it's lifeless. Are you here, somebody? Have you ever seen when they cut off the head of the chicken, the chicken will get up and be running with no head? And some people will be running away. So you'll be running around as if, hey, the devil will be that. No, be any devil. Is the is the is the last life in the chicken that's going out. Once the head is off, it's off. And that's how the thing in your body. Hey, 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 hey. You say, hey, I said, I said that because of your body. The, the, that sickness, Jesus killed it. Agree with him. Declare it. Give him give thanks. Before you know what's happening, it's out of your body. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody say, I'm out in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, the head of the serpent is off in Jesus' name. Somebody say, I'm healed. I'm blessed. I'm helped of the Lord. So I shall live. I shall not die. I shall declare the works of the Lord. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm living my best life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory. Glory. Now, I want you to lift up your hand to heaven and just begin to thank God for your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 53 verse 1 said, Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Glory to God. That means if you believe what has been spoken by the scriptures, the power of God has come to you. Do I have believers today? All right. The power of God has come to you. I said it has come to your house. If you believe the message of the gospel, and we have preached the gospel today. We have not preached our own words. We have shown you from the scriptures. You can go and check it by yourself and see it again. So if you believe it, the Bible said in Romans 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power. It didn't say the gospel has the power. He said, the gospel is the power. That means as these words are spoken to you and you believe them, your estate has changed. So today, your estate, your status has changed. I keep hearing this in my heart, that God is bringing men out of a lowly estate. It's not just about money, but something about your destiny is coming out. You see, when, when scripture begins to become alive to you, you discover that Satan will have no grounds in your life again. That's what I see in your life. That you leave healing schools, healing miracle service today, and it's not just that you live with testimonies, yes, but the greatest testimony that by reason of a knowledge of God that has come alive in you, Satan no longer has grounds in your life. Glory to God. In fact, some of you, as you are hearing the scripture now, Satan is already packing his load. 
wherever he was camping in your house, you have ejected him. His parking is load already. His parking is load. Because when light comes, darkness can't stay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, I'm just like you. I'm no different from you. The only thing possibly is that when you choose to believe God's word and act on it aggressively, then you start seeing some things happening. You start seeing some supernatural, spiritual manifestations happening that were not there when you did not know and believe God's word. But when the word of God comes to you, when the gospel comes to you and you believe it, your estate has changed. So hear me. I'm using these words very responsibly. As you hear me today, your estate has changed. Some of you, something has entered your body now. Whatever it was, whatever operation of the devil was creating those symptoms, something has entered your body now and those things are dying. Health is coming to you. Some of you are going to, you're going to see after today, you're just going to start steadily improving in your health. Steadily. Your health will just, you say strength will just start coming up. Steadily improving. Some of you after today, some kind dream you've been dreaming, you won't dream it again. Satan has packed his load though. Some of you that have been struggling with fear in some areas, you just see that thing will just it will take off like a bird flying. You see, it can't stay again. I say it can't stay again. God has changed your estate. Glory to God forevermore. <laughs> Give me a shout, glory! favor of God is going to be escalated in your life like never before in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This favor will answer for you in the name of Jesus. This favor will speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This favor will stir up men to defend you, to speak for you even when you're not present, to contend for you, to speak on your behalf, to defend you when you're not present. And their contentions for you will bring great good into your life. That's one. Your horn, the Lord has exalted with honor and favor. Father, we thank you. 
Father, we thank you. Secondly, your estate, the Lord has changed. He has moved you out of a lowly estate to a high estate. See, it's not just money. It can be a situation where your joy is restored, your peace is restored, where some operations of the devil that had, had not allowed life to be complete for you have suddenly ceased in Jesus' name. Amen. The power of God has lifted you from that lowly estate. Some of you will start having a genuine smile now. Genuine joy. Can you imagine what it means to be afraid to go to sleep because of your afraid? Every time you go to sleep, those nightmares, reoccurring nightmares take place. You're dreading going to sleep. It has ended. I say it has ended. I say it has ended. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has ended. I know what? The head of the serpent. The head of the snake has been cut off. Whatever was the root cause of some of these oppression you've been having in your life is being dealt with today. Genuinely, you'll be able to smile. Genuinely, you'll be able to walk in the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. And you know what? As these spiritual things are restored, you just start seeing material things being restored in your life. You just start seeing God bring you into wide and open spaces. You just see God introducing new and fresh things into your life. You know, I'm smelling it. I'm smelling it now. You know how it is after a long season of dry season, no rain. You know how it is when those first rains start coming. You know that smell. You can tell that rain is coming. Well, in the spirit, I'm smelling something concerning your life. It's a new season for you in the name of Jesus. There's a freshness coming in the name of Jesus. There's a newness coming in the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing you into wider open spaces in the name of Jesus. The days of oppression and frustration are gone forever. New days of liberty have come. New days of expression has come. The Lord has exalted your heart with honor and favor in the name of Jesus Christ. The fresh winds of God's favor are blowing over your life. The winds of God are blowing over you and your beauty is coming forth. There's a beautiful scent. There's a beautiful smell. There's a beautiful story manifesting. You know, we have the word of the Lord for much. But this is not it, but for healing and miracle service, this is it. I kept hearing my spirit again. The Lord said, this month is going to be a month of great honor for you. Watch it. See, you're rising on. This place you have entered into, this anointing you have entered into, is, there's no depreciation in this anointing. You just, you just see yourself steadily moving forward. You just, you just are seeing you're rising. You're just rising. If they like, let, they say, let them say, that the dollar is 10,000 naira for one. You just find out that you're eating well. Yes, sir. You're doing your biggest projects. All kind of favor is surrounding you. All kind of favor is manifesting. You just discover that you're in the sweetest moment of your life. See, something, something's on you. You're, you're, you're moving. There's a force just causing you to rise. Just causing you to rise. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. It happens when you start believing this kind of good news. Your story is different. Your experience is different. You're exempted. You're one in a million. Though a thousand may fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand side, none of these things shall come near you. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. It will not come near you in the name of Jesus. As I hear somebody, as hands are laid on you, just know the head of the serpent has been cut off. Are you hear somebody? And that's that body of the serpent that was trying to show you that he's alive, though he's, why he's dead, it will finally be quiet. That noise will finally be quiet. Kai, thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, in March, you're moving forward. In March, your life is progressing. The things that held you bound, you just find those shackles have left you in the name of Jesus. You will progress in this anointing. Glory to God. If you will, just lift up your hands and just give God thanks for what you have received today. Thank him. Every transaction in the spirit is delivered by faith, is enjoyed by faith, and is kept by faith. And faith's highest expression is thanksgiving. So lift up your hands and thank him for what you believe you have received today. Lord, we're grateful to you. For your power is in action. Your power is at work in your people. We thank you for every good word you have spoken of your people. 
is fiercely coming to pass. Thank you for the attachments of favor today. Thank you for moving your people from a low estate to a high estate. Lord, we thank you. Thank you because the head of the serpent is cut off today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because there are all kinds of interventions today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you because life will be different today. From today, life, you're, you're moving forward today. Listen, the trajectory of your word is up, of your life, is upwards and forwards in the name of Jesus. You have stepped into the anointing. You know how you maintain this anointing? Words. You keep speaking. Glory to God. Say, God has visited me today. Say, in the name of Jesus, my life is upwards and forwards. You see, your business is to declare. It's God's business to perform. Say, God has visited me today. Say, my life is upwards and forwards. Say, in the name of Jesus, my life has been spared and delivered like a bird that has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Say, the snare is broken. I have escaped. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory to God forevermore. Next time I see you, next time I see you, it will be a different story. Next time I see you, you'll be singing a different song. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your life is moving upwards and forwards. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All this thing that's happening in the nations of the world and in your country, Nigeria, it will be like story to you in the name of Jesus. You are moving upwards and forwards in Jesus' name. Many of you are being identified for new favor, identified for new honor, identified for new increase in the name of Jesus. You see, I'm happy because many of you, that noise in your body is quiet in the name of Jesus Christ. That thing that you say is disturbing you in your body is quiet in the name of Jesus Christ. You have a sound mind a vigorous and strong spirit in the name of Jesus and a healed and strong body and you're going to serve the Lord should the Lord tarry for many, 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 many long, 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 long years to come with a strong and healthy and vigorous body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Many of you, some things that will start happening to you in your life will start changing the story in your families. Will start changing the family in your communities. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lift up your hands and thank him again. Glory to God forevermore. Lord, we're grateful to you. For all that you have wrought in our midst today, we're grateful to you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, when your people leave today, they will not forget the words that have been spoken to them. Holy Spirit, remind them of the words spoken to them. Hey, remind them of the words spoken to them. Let it burn in their heart like a fire. Let it come out of their mouth like a fire. And let it bring the power for establishment and fulfillment. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Well, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph.